I was doing my Sunday night drives for extra money with DoorDash and Uber Eats. My friends showed me how to use both at the same time and make more money per hour. One of the biggest issues with doing delivery services is that you have a lot of downtime where you just drive around waiting for an order to pop up. But if you work both apps at the same time, you can get rid of all that downtime and constantly be making money. So I was doing this for a few hours, racing back and forth between houses and restaurants, when I got a small order from a nearby restaurant, but the house was far away. These are the worst kinds of orders because you drive far and get paid less, though this one offered a large amount, meaning the tip must be crazy big. Accepting it, I picked up the order and began the 25 minutes drive to their address. Halfway through the drive, while on a side road, I got a call from the app. Assumingly being the customer, I answered, asking if this was my Uber Eats customer. A man confirmed he was my customer and apologized profusely, saying he ordered from his friend's account and forgot to change the address. He said his house was just around the block, though, and he proceeded to give me directions, telling me a couple turns to take. Once I reached the friend's house, I asked him for the address just in case I got lost, but he responded, saying I'll see him outside waiting for him, then hung up. Obviously, this shit was not normal. However, I was more than halfway there at this point, and I gave the man the benefit of the doubt, as forgetting to switch it from your friend's address seemed like a legit thing that could happen. It could have also been the fact that I was a bigger guy that helped me convince myself to go through with the delivery, as I wasn't really afraid of anything. When I got to the supposed friend's house, I took the turns, as the man had said, and drove down a dimly lit neighborhood road until I reached a no outlet sign and saw the road ended just a few houses down. Feeling confident I had taken the turns, as the man had said, I pulled over and grabbed my phone to call the customer. Just as I was clicking into my recent calls, a knock at my driver window made me jump. A bit embarrassed at how noticeably startled I was, I rolled the window down to greet him, but looking up at the man, his face had no emotion just a completely straight, blank face. I let go of the window button and immediately pressed the lock button, which was followed by the man sticking a gun through the half-open window right at my head. As he yelled out something, I heard more voices call back, followed by a group of people running up to the car and trying to open the door handles. They were all yelling commands at each other, but in the heat of the moment, I couldn't make out what they were saying. I was in a full-on shock, staring into the barrel of this guy's gun. If I had to guess, there were at least five or six people surrounding my car in this moment. I don't even remember having any thoughts. But I can only describe it as more of a reflex-type reaction, because when the man holding the gun looked away for a split second, I suddenly slammed on the gas flooring it down the street. I'm surprised the man even held onto his gun as he pulled his hand out of the window just in time. Seeing the end of the road, though, I quickly did a three-point turn, and when I faced the other end of the street again, they were all gone. Not a single one of them anywhere on the road, sidewalk, or by the houses. They must have just fled the scene the instant I began driving. As soon as I made it out of the neighborhood, I called 911. These gang-type attacks are relatively common around here, but I never thought it would happen to me. Although nothing came of it. With nobody being found and every piece of evidence leading to nowhere, I see this event as a sort of wake-up call for me. I realized in the moment that the man put a gun to my head, that being a big, confident man meant absolutely nothing. Taking a risk like that was purely stupid, because literally anyone with a weapon can have your life in their hands in an instant. If you work a job like this or do anything where you see strangers regularly, be careful because putting yourself in a risky situation with a stranger could be the last thing you ever do. Being a delivery driver for several pizza places a few years back, I had a lot of experiences with weird customers or just strange things that would happen at night. But this one night takes the prize for the most disturbing and unusual situation. I had been working at the specific chain pizza shop for just under a year. I worked mid-shifts and night shifts alongside one other co-worker. For the most part, it would stay busy, basically up until closing at 2 am, so there wasn't a ton of time to mess around, especially since it was just the two of us. I'll call my co-worker Tom to keep his privacy. Tom was older than me by a few years and was a quiet, 
hard worker. He was in charge during the night shifts and would make all the pizzas while I would deliver them. Both of us would answer calls, though, depending on who was busy and who wasn't. Anyway, it was just past 11 p.m. And I had gotten back from a delivery when the phone rang. Seeing Tom in the middle of making a pizza, I picked up the phone. A man on the other line spoke, asking for a large sausage pizza. I put in the order and asked if he needed anything else. The man didn't answer for a moment, then he repeated himself, saying that he'd like a large sausage pizza. This time, I could tell through the way he mumbled it out that he was likely drunk. I confirmed that he just wanted one pizza, and the man said yes. I sent the order through, then grabbed my next delivery and dropped it off. Getting back to the shop, Tom had finished the guy's order and prepped it for delivery, so I grabbed it off the counter, ran to my car. I noticed as I was grabbing the order though, Tom was giving me a weird look, as if he wanted to say something to me, but he decided not to. Again though, Tom was pretty quiet and soft-spoken, so it wasn't very odd. The address was a good 15 minutes away, but there was no traffic at this time, so I got there pretty early. The house was normal, but had a lot of land on either side, with the neighbors' homes barely visible through the trees. I got out and went around to the passenger door to pick up the pizza. Then I headed up to the porch and knocked on the door. A few seconds later, a man came and opened the door wide open. This wasn't all that strange, but I always found it odd when people would open their door that wide, as it was just unnecessary. But his face when he saw me seemed very confused and surprised, as if he hadn't expected to see me. Figuring he was just drunk and out of it, I handed him the box and told him his total, to which he slowly and awkwardly handed me cash. Not saying anything. He held the box of pizza while standing in front of me and looked at it with a strange intensity. Then he moved his eyes up towards me, but not at me. He was looking over my shoulder like he saw something, but was just staring at it with that same intensity before shaking his head slowly like he was saying no. Getting really uncomfortable watching this man, I couldn't help but look back. I turned my head over my right shoulder and looked toward the driveway. Just a few feet from my car was a hooded man running back towards the trees. My heart jumped and I felt my body go into a sort of shock. Trying to figure out what to do, I turned back around to face the man at the door, but he immediately stepped back and slammed the door shut. It all happened so fast in just a matter of seconds and gave me no time to react. With the door closed in front of me, I turned to face the hooded man again, but he was lost in the dark tree line. I stumbled off the porch and ran to my car, backing out of the driveway as soon as possible and driving back to work. I calmed myself during the drive but still couldn't understand what happened. When I got back, I told Tom about the encounter, who seemed to have very little reaction and rather just told me to deliver the next order when I was ready. I did as he said, but on my way back from the delivery I ended up pulling over and calling the police to let them know just in case. They said they would have an officer check it out and call me back to update me. I got a call an hour later and once I got out of work, I waited in the parking lot for the police to show up and talk to me. When the officer came up to my car, he mentioned that he talked to the man at the residence who matched the description I gave him and the guy told the officer that he was just waiting for his buddy Tom to show up since he knew he worked at the pizza shop. When asked about the hooded man, he gave no details, saying he didn't know anything about that and he didn't see anyone with that information. I was even more horrified and confused. I thought maybe they called thinking Tom was a delivery driver and were setting him up so that they could jump him. That would explain the hooded man by my car and the surprise of the guy at the door. I also think back to that look Tom gave me, thinking maybe he was going to warn me of something. I talked to Tom on multiple occasions about it though, but he gave me quick, useless answers, saying the guy was just an old friend and that he didn't know anything about anything. I moved on to another pizza shop very soon after that incident. But now that the horror of the situation is in the past, and I know it likely wasn't a target on me specifically, I enjoy trying to figure out the mystery. I still don't know for sure what the situation was, but it was by far the strangest and creepiest I've ever had. During COVID delivering groceries became pretty popular, and even after, people still had them delivered to their house. 
I was a picker for those orders, and when we were understaffed, which was pretty much all the time, I was also dropping them off. It wasn't a bad job. I actually enjoyed driving to people's homes. I got to see nice houses, and I didn't have to deal with the constant questions from customers, so I wasn't complaining. I got tips sometimes too, which was nice. Most of the time though, I left the groceries at the doorstep, took a picture as proof, and then left. But I did have moments where I got to meet the people and help them take in the groceries. One instance was this older lady from Serbia. Her name was Vesna, and she loved me. We got to know each other because every Thursday she'd have pretty much the same stuff ordered to her house at the exact same time. The first few times I dropped off her groceries, she never came outside, but I'd catch her peeking out the window at me. I'd give a little wave, take my picture, then get back in the truck and leave. I think once she realized it was the same person delivering her groceries every time she got more comfortable, she came out and greeted me. Then slowly, over time, I started bringing in the groceries for her and setting them on her counters. She was pretty old, so I was happy to help. And she also tipped nicely too. The more I went, the more I got to know her. She was recently widowed and lived alone. All her children lived far away, and she only saw them once or twice a year for the holidays when she could take the train. She was also retired, but she used to be a broker, which explained her nice house. I always looked forward to Thursdays, and this one was no different. She had ordered everything on Monday, as she always did, and I was dropping off the following Thursday. When I pulled into the driveway, I immediately noticed that something was off. She wasn't at the door like she usually was, but the door was open. I also noticed that all her blinds were closed, which was strange. She always kept them open so her plants could get some sun. I went up to the open front door and not seeing her, I rang the doorbell. I waited for a bit, but there was no answer. I knocked a few times and there was no answer again. So I naturally started to become a little worried. She was old, so my immediate thought was maybe she fell or had a heart attack or something. I kind of stood there wondering what I should do. I thought maybe I should go inside. But I was also on the job and I know the rules are that if no one answers, I just have to leave the groceries on the porch. Being her friend, though, I decided it best to go inside and at least put her groceries on the counter. Like usual. The door was open after all. I grabbed all the bags in both of my hands and walked straight into the kitchen. All the lights were off and everything was quiet. Placing the bags on her counter, I called out her name again, hearing no response as I started walking out. Calling the police crossed my mind, but I didn't really know how to explain this was an emergency because what if she was just out of the house? Maybe she was just visiting someone and I just wasted the police officer's time. I really was in a weird position. But I just knew something was wrong. But just as I got to the doorway leading outside, I heard movement in the house upstairs. I felt relieved for a moment calling out for Vesna, but then there was again no response. No one came to the door or answered me. After a minute of standing there, I kept hearing shuffling movement, as if someone was moving stuff around upstairs, and started to feel really awkward and uncomfortable. I headed back outside and got in the car. I sat there for a little while, and after a minute I saw the curtains on the second story move to the side, as if someone was looking at me through the window. I pulled out and drove around the corner, then parked on the street and sat there, just really confused. I didn't know if it was her and she just didn't want to see anyone or maybe one of her kids. I was also concerned with whether or not I should call the police. I drove off, went around the block and then decided to drive by her house again. I sat there for a little while again until I saw the upstairs curtains open. I saw a male figure look out and then closed it quickly, as if seeing my truck scared him. I knew Vesna had two daughters and she had a son, but he had passed away years ago so I'm not sure who could possibly be at her house with her not there. And where would she be anyway? I had been there too long though, and had to get back to work the following week. There were no orders from her for the first time in almost a year. I drove by her house after I got off on Thursday, and in the driveway was an officer's car. When I got home, I searched her name and found that she had been filed as missing. 
only a few days after I had been there to deliver her groceries. I noticed the date they said she was likely last at home, though, was the day after she had ordered the groceries. Two days before, I had gone to her house and saw that man. I went to the police with all the information I had. I don't know who that man was or if I was close to having something happen to me as well. But it's been nearly three years now, and there have been no updates.